Hey everyone, and welcome to the tutorial series for the procedural city generator. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how we can dynamically change the call distance of our assets in our city at runtime. Uh, it's going to be a fairly simple video. We're going to see how we can set up our blueprints in our level and how we can adjust our settings for best performance. And if I go ahead and jump into Unreal, we are exactly where we left off from our last video. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go back and watch the video about city optimization where I go over some general settings on how to prepare your custom assets to be as performant as possible. And I go over some tricks that we can use to increase performance. Uh, and one of those has to do with max draw distance. Every static mesh in Unreal Engine has this property and it's basically telling the renderer what is the minimum distance that this object needs to be rendered. So if you put the distance at say 10,000 units and you're farther than that, then the then Unreal doesn't even have to do any occlusion calling, any calculation, it'll automatically remove it from, uh, from the rendering queue, so to speak. So in the last video, we looked at how we can change those values by selecting individual assets or selecting them all through the interface by clicking buttons like select all buildings. But the idea here is you could you could tune these values by going down here into the call distance. And in this case, for this building is 80,000. And you could change this to whatever you want to adjust performance. So if I come back here and say, instead of 80,000, I want it to be 10,000. And I change that and I back out a little bit more you'll see that the building now disappears. Now, obviously this would be very, very small for such a big building, but think about uh, all of your smaller props um, that are gonna be occluded anyway by all these buildings. And you can now start thinking about how you can change these values depending on the asset to make sure that you get the best bang for the buck and your city still looks pretty nice. Now that's one way of doing it is by selecting these assets, but there is another way of doing it in bulk and that is if we go to the actual city blueprint. So if you go down here to your PCG folder, you'll notice that there is a blueprint that is the parent of all of the other blueprints in your city. In this case, the city is called Perf City. So this is literally gonna be called Perf City for Performance City, by the way. And then you're gonna get like all of the foliage, all of the buildings, etc. Fixed props, foliage, etc. Random props. So if you select this top level blueprint, you're gonna notice that not only do we have some settings here like city name, etc., but down here we have setup call distances. And this is basically another way of quickly setting up the call distances for your various actors in your city. So the very first thing we'll do is we're gonna click on get all actors. And notice that as soon as I do that, the building list, prop list, and foliage list are immediately populated. And you can see that we have 2,200 buildings, 2,400 props, and over 5,000 trees under the foliage. And if you open it here, it's basically just a big old array with all of the references to all of the buildings, props, and foliage. So that's great. Um, then you'll notice that we have a struct here called city call distances. And if you open it here, you have several options. You have three booleans here. And these are going to determine what types of, pro of assets you want to uh, modify. And then you have the call distance for, again, buildings, props, and foliage. So if I wanted to quickly change the, the call distance for my buildings, um, I'm, only, I'm only going to select one at a time, one category at a time, by the way. And instead of 80,000, I want to make it, again, just for to, to make it really obvious, 10,000. I can go down here and click on set call distances and you can see that immediately all of the buildings are now 10,000. And if I fly, you can see that now the buildings that I, that I am um, rendering have a very, very short uh, draw distance. So you can see here and as soon as I go up, all of the buildings disappear. Right? So that is one way that you can do it in addition to selecting the individual buildings. Now this way is kind of a shotgun approach. There is no uh, options to select individual ones. This is everything that is categorized as a building is gonna get this setting. So one workflow would be if you have a max draw distance for each individual type, that would be a blanket setting. I would start with this option 
and then you can go and select individual buildings and change their draw distances separately, their call distances, to further optimize your city. But that's one way that you can do that, right? So let's go back and make it 80,000. And again, go down here and set call distances. And then you see that we are back to where we were before. And I'm not going to go through every option, but of course you see that we can do props and foliage. It's the same thing. Uh, but now we want to basically do that, but at runtime. And to do that, we are going to, uh, right here, I already have it open, Procedural City, Blueprints, the folder called Call Distance, and we're going to have two different blueprints here that are basically going to connect to this city blueprint and basically call this exact same function to set the call distance on the buildings at runtime. So I already have a little key selected here, and we're going to be testing this here in this side of the city because you can see here, not only can we see a lot of buildings and a lot of props, but we can also see a lot of foliage. So I want to make sure that we're, we're targeting those. So let's go ahead and drag the first one here called BP change call distances. Just drag it to your level and make sure you're, you're out of game mode. So you can see the, the trigger and you can see the little uh, billboard there. I'm just going to rotate it here. Oops, not like that, like this. And it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. And I'm going to now go all up here. And with the Y, see the trigger scale, I'm going to increase the Y and increase the Z. And for city reference, I'm going to select my current city. Notice that you can have several different cities in your level. So make sure you select the correct city right uh, and then manager reference we're going to look at that in just a second but for now you don't have to enter it and you'll notice that we have the exact same struct all of the exact same options that we had earlier under options right we have all of the different uh tags here or, or the booleans and a specific distance for each individual type um, the difference here is at runtime we can do it on all at the same time so just for fun, let's go ahead and make this really, really tiny. Everything's going to be 10,000. So as soon as we hit this trigger, you're going to notice that the buildings are going to um, get this new setting. And to make it even easier on us, I'm going to deselect hidden. That way we can actually see it in game. And let's make sure that we can be right here. And we click on play. And just give it a second to, uh, to play here. Um, one cool thing uh, that I would suggest is that you use the command stat unit graph. That's what you're seeing here. Uh, so not only do you get the, the performance numbers in milliseconds for frame, game, and draw thread, but you actually get a little chart here that's really useful for you so you can see how, uh, how your game is performing, um, not just the raw number, right? So you can see the graph that as we move around, look how things are changing based on how many uh, meshes Unreal Engine has to render. So if I look here, look how low that is on that chart. And as soon as I turn, look how that starts climbing. And that's because obviously we have way more things that we're rendering. Um, so with all that said, let's go ahead and walk into our trigger. And let's take a look at what happens on that chart. As soon as I walk in, notice that we start with a big spike. And then we go down, down, down. And notice that it's still going. Look at all those trees that are still going down, down, down. And now all of the buildings, all of the props, and all of the foliage now has a max draw distance of 10,000. Now, you still saw that at the beginning there was a kind of a big spike. So I'm going to show you how to tune the settings to minimize that spike. And you can see the foliage here. Right, the settings to control the smoothness or how uh, how slow or how fast it tries to go through all the assets are going to be right here. They're going to be not actually on the trigger themselves. They're going to be back on the city blueprint all the way here. In this case, perf city, and these are the settings that you see right here: batch size and batch delay. And it's exactly what it sounds like. What these settings are saying is that you're going to process 10 objects at a time. 
then you're going to wait for a tenth of a second and then you're going to process 10, 10 objects at a time. It's the same principle that we use when we're, when we're spawning our buildings at editor time and you can see the numbers there, but we're going to do it at runtime because we, we don't want to try to spawn or, or change 10,000 objects, right? We can see here 9,000 some objects all in one frame. You're going to basically lock your game for a couple of seconds if you try to do that. So instead, we use this to spread out the uh, the amount of work that we're doing per frame. So if, if, if you see that hitch that you saw earlier, uh, you, you can either reduce the batch size or increase the delay. And that way, you can, you can basically play with these numbers until you get a smoother curve here. Maybe you have a really, really nice machine and your target is super high end. So go ahead and make the batch size something like 500 um, or the delay even slower than that. And you'll get the results that you want. All right. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so now let's go ahead and I'm going to grab another uh, one of these. But for the, for but this time, I want to go and go back and change to the default. And again, if I come back and hit play here. Oh, sorry about that. I just want uh, I just want you guys to see the difference. So one trigger is going to reduce the call distance and another one will increase the call distance back to the default. Just give it a second. All right. It's going to maximize here. And again, we're going to first go back in to the first trigger. And you can see how our buildings are reducing. Eventually goes to the props. And the last thing is the foliage. And I have it in that order specifically. Buildings are first, then props, then foliage. And now when we go back to our trigger here, our buildings are first, then our props, then our foliage. And you can see, and we're basically back to where we were. So what if we wanted to do that in a more logical scenario? That's pretty much it, by the way. Uh, what if we wanted to do this in a more logical scenario? What if you had these two? Actually, I'm going to control Z here, see if it appears. Nope. All right. Well, I had two triggers here. What if uh, the player keeps going back and forth between triggers or hits the same trigger more than once? You don't want to keep running the same function and again, again and again and again if, you're, if the player is hitting the same trigger. And this is where the distance manager, the call distance manager comes into play. So basically all we're going to do is we're just going to place this guy here and we don't have to do anything else. Literally just place this guy on the level and now go back to your trigger, whoops, and now select your manager reference. And again, in this case, we only have one, but if you have multiple cities, you probably ha want to have a manager for each city, so select the correct one. And now what we're going to do is, instead of having a trigger like this, what if we wanted to make this trigger the size of the city? And I know this is probably not the best uh, case scenario, but let's just go with it. If I go all the way here and I'm going to put this guy kind of in the middle of the city and we can actually say zero and zero here and make it exactly. And we're going to reset. And now we're going to make the trigger basically the size of the city. So we can make X something like, I don't know, 5,000 maybe. You can see that it's not quite, but it's almost there. And then this is what, 1,000? No, 1,500 maybe, 2,000. All right, that's gonna be most of it. And if we go back down, oops, nope, 2,000. All right, and if we go back down, oh, come on guys, there we go, sorry about that. You can see the trigger. Where's the trigger? It's going to be, where is our trigger? Let's go down here, here, this guy right here. Oh, the look at the trigger is going to be right here. All right. So we need to start all the way here to hit that trigger. Okay. Now let's see what happens when I hit play. 
And this is probably not the best use case. You probably want to sprinkle them based on gameplay, but this is just to prove a point about what would be a good use case for changing the draw distance, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and click play. And here's the trigger. You can see it there. And we're entering the city and our buildings are very, very small. All right, cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and change this to buildings being something more reasonable, like 40,000. But now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this guy. We're simply going to increase the height. It's going to be about this height. And we're going to change this from 40,000 to maybe 70,000. And we're only going to do buildings. And then we're going to further duplicate this and we're going to change this to 100,000. Or you know what, let's just go all out 150,000. And I think you can figure out why I'm doing it this way. But again, while it plays, the idea is that you want a longer draw distance the higher you are in your level. So if you're playing on the floor, right, you're walking around in the streets, or you're driving around in a car, you probably don't need a very large draw distance. But if you go up, uh, you know, maybe in one of the apartments, you probably want a better draw distance. You can see here, and I'm not gonna go. You, you you can picture us going up the stairs. I'm just going to whoops. I'm just going to simply go up, and you can see that we're going up. Uh, imagine that we're actually going up here, and notice now that we have longer draw distance, a larger draw distance. I think it was sixty thousand, but imagine that again. There's a much um, there's a much taller building, and as we keep going up. I put this way too high, so I'm just going to... Oops. Did I change this one? I thought I did. I think this, this was 100,000. There you go. Maybe I should have put more, but you get the idea, right? And then as soon as we're going down, then we're changing those values down. And eventually when you hit the floor, then those values should go down. So that's just an example of how you would use dynamic call distance. Uh, probably a silly example. I probably wouldn't recommend you do that on a citywide basis, but that is the idea, is that you would change the values based on height or based on specific areas of your game. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple. It's not the most advanced thing to do, but it's just one more tool that you have in your disposal to control the, the draw distance for your city. In the next video, we're actually gonna look into a more advanced technique. Uh, and this is something I call city sections. And we're going to be dividing our city into different sections And we're going to be loading and unloading all of the sections based on the player's location. So that's a more dramatic uh, method of controlling performance. And with city sections, we're also going to be looking at how to use level streaming with Unreal Engine, which is ultimately what you want to do if you have a really big city. Ultimately, you can optimize as much as you want, but at some point, you just don't want to have so many buildings and, and actors loaded at a time, just because, you know, based <laughs> based on, on the limits of, of a regular machine, you're going to hit that limit pretty fast. So that's going to be the next video, guys. Um, if you have any questions about dynamic call distance, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, if you haven't joined our Discord, please join. Let me know what you think in the Procedural City Generator channel. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.